Hello friends, welcome back. Okay, so now we're at about arrays on our Ruby koans. So we need to open up our about arrays file. Now we're actually here. One thing I could do is I could use the terminal and say open about arrays, uh, arrays. And then I hit the tab in order to uh, autofill it. And so then uh, about arrays is gonna jump up. Um, I've got Adam set as my default code editor. If you have a different one, you could say open and then select uh, your application by selecting dash A, and then say, uh, you could say maybe whatever. I, I'm still gonna use Adam. Adam's just gonna open it up again. It's opening it here. Uh, if you need to select your application, you can do that. So if you wanna do Sublime or something like that, you could put it in here. Okay, so about arrays, line six. So here we're at six, um, an array.new. So let's go back. I, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move my REPL. I'm just dragging it out here and I'm gonna put it up at the top so that we have our REPL visible here. And then I've also got my, um, I'm, I, I have the capacity to run rake commands from this file. So yeah, now we're back into our Ruby uh, REPL environment. If you don't know how to get here, the way to um, get there is you just say um, IRB. Um, and once you have Ruby installed, that should be uh, fairly, fairly straightforward. So yeah, what happens if we go array.new? That gives us an empty array. So we recognize these from JavaScript. Um, what, what is it? Array.new is equal to a class. What is that? The class is equal to array, right? So an empty array.class is going to be equal to array. And then uh, an empty array.size, so what happens if we go like this, dot size? That gives us zero. Okay, cool. Um, well, what happens if we did our array and we pushed something into there? Like say we, um, well, can you go like that? Can you go push maybe the letter A by adding it into there? Cool, you can. Another way in Ruby that you could do is you could go uh, B. And this would get you an array like that. Huh. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, but, I, so it's not adding it to it. So you can use push just like in JavaScript, but you can also use the shovel method, which uh, adds things to it. Um, so yeah, if we did, uh, if we go, um, let me think, okay, so an, an array with a letter inside of it, right? And if we did that and we did size, that's gonna give us one. Um, another thing we can do in, um, in Ruby is we can say count as well. And so those are the kind of cool things about Ruby. So the array, if it's just nothing in it, then the size is equal to zero. Um, test array literals, array is equal to a new array. Assert equal, so what do you think? Is if we set an array equal to this guy, that's gonna be an empty array. Is that equal to this? What do you think? Um, I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess not true because my guess is that they're a different object. Um, oh, array is not, huh? Oh, we, what about, we need to, if we wanna assert equal, we just go like that. So it is true. So an empty array is equal to another array. So we don't even need to change anything here. So, uh, okay, cool. So here what they're gonna do is they're saying, um, let's first save a variable of array is equal to array new. And so now array is equal to that. What happens if we go array at position zero and we set that to one? Well, that's gonna make it so our array now has multiple has a single thing in it. So now if we did array dot count, it's going to be it's going to have a value. It's going to have one value. So here it says um, assert equal one is equal to array. I think that that's true. Um, yeah, so array at position one is equal to two. So if we go array at position one is equal to two. Now our array is going to render out to an array with two values in it. So the size of the array is going to be two and the um, value, because there's two values in there. So yeah, at position one, so here we wanna say this is gonna be two. And if we do array, and then we do the shovel method, and we add 333 into there, now our array is one, two, and then 333. So assert equal the array. So they're asking us to um, spell out what the array is now that we've done it. So it was initially the position zero was set to one, and then at position one it was set to two, and then at position and then it, we shoveled on 333. So that's going to make this one equal. Um, cool. So let's do the test accessing array elements. So if our array is equal to peanut butter and jelly. Let's throw that into our REPL as well. Um, array at position zero, well, it's gonna be the first initial value, so it's gonna be peanut, right? And you'll be able to say array at position zero is equal to peanut, cool. And these are symbols, which um, 
is I'm not exactly sure how to describe that right now. Um, anyways, array.first. So what is this doing? This is just showing us that Ruby has this cool method called array.first, which will give you the same thing. So you can go array.second as well. Oh man, array.second. Okay, in Rails you can actually do second, but in Ruby you only have the first one. So, uh, peanut. That's the cool thing about Ruby Collins, you're learning. In uh, Ruby on Rails, they actually have another method called second, third, and they've got second to last and third to last, which is kind of cool. Some people think that's crazy. So that the array at position three, there's zero, one, two, three. So this is going to be jelly, right? And we can test that by saying array at position three, and it sets to jelly. So array dot last, array dot last. What is this doing? This is showing us that you could say position three if you know the length of the array, or you could just say array last, and that'll get you the same value. Uh, jelly. Okay, cool. And what about array at negative one? Um, so my guess is that array at position negative one is going to be the same thing as saying last. So it's jelly as well. Cool. And array at negative three, well, one, two, three. My guess is this is gonna be butter. Um, butter, cool. And so array at position negative three is equal to butter. Cool, looks like we got it right. So it's zero, one, or one, two, three. It counts um, non-zero going backwards. Um, so yeah. So now let's save our array peanut butter and jelly. Oh, we, we still have the same one. So this is testing our ability to slice the array. So this is gonna be array from position zero to one. So my guess is that this is going to be just a peanut. But it might be wrong because I think it might be like this. It might, be, it might feed us back an array. So if we go array at position zero to one, Cool, it's peanut in an array, so that's that's right. So zero to two, what do you think that's gonna be? I think it's gonna be an array of peanut and then butter, because it's peanut and butter and then it stops at position two. Array at position two, two, what do you think that's gonna be? Zero, one, two. My guess is it's going to just be and. It's gonna be an array that says and in it. Let's see what happens if we throw it into the REPL. Okay. Interesting, zero, one, two. For whatever reason, it just does the rest. It goes and jelly. So maybe if you don't provide valid constraints, it just uh, does the whole thing. So at from position two to 20, so what does that mean? Well, you'd think this might cause an error in some goofy, like in some like more uh, traditional programming languages. But here, even though there's not any values after uh, three, it still allows you to do 20, so you can kind of use this to be a little bit more sloppy with the way that you're writing code. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what everybody thinks about that, but I think that it's kind of cool that it's not quite so literal, that this doesn't give you an error, it doesn't break your program, it just says, well, that's the best that we can do with the information we have. So array at position four to zero, what do you think? Zero, one, two, three. So it's like four to zero. I don't think that this is, I think this is just gonna be an empty array. Cool, it is an empty array. So here, it's gonna be an empty array. From four to 100, I'm guessing an empty array again, because there's no values at four to 100. So what does it come out to here? Same thing, empty array. Five to zero. Hmm. That's gonna be an empty array too. Oh, five to zero, so maybe because this is a lower value than that one, we get nil. What if we did array at position two to zero? Hmm, that gives us an empty array. So that's really just kind of confusing, strange stuff. So this is gonna be nil, and we'll just save that there. Um, test arrays and ranges. Okay, so let's check out what, an ar what a range is, right? If we put this into our REPL, we're gonna see we get that. Um, what if we go inspect? Ah, interesting. One to five, what if we got to string? That changes it. Okay, so that's just a range. I don't usually use, I don't see ranges very often, but what if we do the class? Now this is going to be probably capital range, right? Range, yeah. So test is equal, a range is equal to a range with the class. So we're calling the class on the range and it says that's a range. So we want to assert that these are not equal. Well, let's see, how do we do that? This is an array with those values in it and then a range of one to five. Are they equal? No, they're not equal. So we can just say, 
assert equal, assert not equal. So this is actually fine. We don't need to do anything. This is just telling us that ranges are not arrays. Uh, one to five, two an array. So what happens? So two A is two an array, if we run it like that. So a range can be converted into array uh, quite simply. And we notice that it goes one, two, three, four, five. And if we use the triple um, dots, that's going to give us, uh, I think it's just going to go one, two, three, four. Yeah, one, two, three, four. So yeah, um, these, the first one's going to be one, uh, two, three, uh, four, uh, and this one's going to be five, but then we want to remove the five from here because the triple uh, dots in a, um, the triple dots in a range cause it to not grab the last value. Cool. Uh, so let's save this. And then, yeah, we're going to move on. So our, let's set our array to peanut butter and jelly again. So now we've got our array is our variable name and it, runs, it renders an array with four symbols in it, peanut butter and jelly. And so assert equal array is zero to two, zero, one, two. With the two dots, I'm guessing that it's going to be peanut butter and uh, that's going to be what it is. So let's see if we get that. And so now we see that we're using the range in the array um, position selector. I hope that makes sense. Peanut butter and, peanut butter and. Cool, looks like we got it. So here, we're showing that the triple dots, the range, again, is useful because what it's telling us is that we just want position zero and one, and we're gonna exclude two because of this, the next dot. So this is just gonna be a peanut and then butter. Cool. And then, okay, so position two to negative one, zero, one, two, to negative one, do you think it's gonna include jelly or not? I'm just, I think that it's just going to be and. Um, but let's see what happens if we throw it in the REPL. Okay, so it does and jelly. So, oh, because if this was a triple, if it was a triple um, period, then we would just get and. But because it's a double period, we're, uh, we're using, we're actually doing, um, we're going to get the last, we're going to get the, the value at position negative one, which is jelly as well. So, yeah, hit this, we want to make this jelly. Because array from two to negative one is and jelly. Uh, cool. Test pushing and popping arrays. So assert equal array. Okay, so here we set our array equal to uh, one, two. That's the array. And so now what we're doing is pushing on a symbol called last. So array.push. And I'm guessing here what I want to say is this is going to be one, two, and then last. And so our arrays can have multiple values. They can have integers. They can hold um, uh, symbols as well. So if we go array.push the last, if we go push last or whatever, then we have here. So, I mean, I, I added whatever, but this is going, it should be last here. So array.pop, what happens if you go array.pop? Okay, so there's an interesting thing that we're gonna notice here. It feeds back array, or it feeds back the last value. It feeds back the value. But if you go, if we look at the array again, now we see it's removed it from the actual array. So if you go array.pop, you're gonna get whatever back, but when you look at your new array, what you've done is you've removed that last value from the array. Um, cool, so the pop to value, oh, and so when we say array.pop, the value that we get back is what is the, here it'll be last, right? So array.pop, if we're saving the value as the value that was popped, so we can put this in here, this is gonna be last, and it just came back like that. I said whatever, but it should be last. And now the array is equal to one, two. Cool. And so that's a really interesting thing because this is about, this, uh, this goes over, this is kind of mutating data. Like pop is, a, is, a, is something that actually mutates your data. Um, and so that's the interesting thing. You can save your popped value in, as a variable, but you're also adjusting um, the, uh, the actual array that you started with. Uh, cool. So test shifting arrays. One, two. Array dot unshift first okay so what this is going to what this is doing is it's just um adding to it right so if we have yeah well our array is already still one two so if we go array dot unshift first well what I, i'm guessing that first i'm guessing that unshift actually is 
adds it to the beginning of the array. So it's going to be like that. So first one, two. So if we do that, and now we see it's just, it renders out to there. So array dot, and so we see that it's added that to the uh, value. And so when we do unshift, we also, the pro, uh, Ruby returns us this value, which we could save um, if we wanted to uh, duplicate it or something. So shifted value is equal to array.shift. So what happens if we go array.shift? Well, my guess is it's going to act the same as pop, but it's going to be the same. But so if we go array.shift, um, <clears throat> well, it's going to return our value of first. But now if we look at our array, it's just one, two. So it works the same way as pop, but it removes the value from the beginning. And so let's uh, unshift that first back onto there. And now, so what happens if we go, sh if we set, if when we do our array.shift, we save the value that's returned from the array.shift as the shifted value. So now shifted value is equal to first, but the array has one and two. So that's this very similar thing to what's going on up here. Uh, the shifted value is equal to first, and the array is equal to um, one, two. And uh, cool, so we can save this, and I think that I've got about arrays correct, so I'm gonna come back over here, I'm gonna say uh, rake, and um, looks like now we're in about array assignments on line six, which is a new file. And so we don't need to do uh, anything else. So this is complete. Um, I'm going to stop this video here and that's part three. We'll see you guys in the next video.